Hello and welcome back to Koala Moon, children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. This is Goodnight Tortoise, Goodnight Hare by Gillian Rogerson. Every morning when Hare woke up, he would leap out of bed and begin rushing about from one activity to another. He liked to keep himself busy, and there was always something to do, somewhere to be, and so very many things to think about. He had lots and lots of busy thoughts in his head, and he sometimes thought they would fall right out of his floppy ears. One sunny morning, as he was out running, Hare was busy thinking about how much he had to do that day, and his attention was on the road far ahead instead of the ground beneath his feet. He didn't notice a tortoise having a leisurely rest on the grass until he accidentally bumped into him. Hare immediately apologised to Tortoise and attempted to go on his way. Tortoise asked why he was in such a rush. I have things to do, Hare explained. Many, many things to do. The tortoise was intrigued and asked Hare what those things were. Hare scratched one of his ears and explained that he had fields to run around, rivers to leap over and bridges to bound across. And there were lots of other things he had to do too, but he couldn't quite remember what they were at the moment. Tortoise slowly shook his head. That sounds exhausting. Hugh must sleep well at night after all that exercise. Hare admitted he didn't sleep well at all, because even though his body was tired, his mind was still wide awake with thoughts of what he was going to do the next day. He looked down at the resting tortoise and said, Isn't everyone like that? Doesn't everyone have a busy mind at night time? Doesn't everyone have trouble sleeping? Not everyone, Tortoise replied. I go to sleep easily, every night. Hare was confused. But what about all your thoughts? Don't they keep you awake? Tortoise shook his head and said he'd found a way to clear his mind of busy thoughts during the day. And so, by night time, his mind felt calm and peaceful. Hare gave the little tortoise a confused look before saying, How can that be? Are you magic? Do you make your thoughts vanish by using a magic wand? Tortoise chuckled and said he wasn't magic at all. In fact, it was very easy for him to clear his mind during the day and he was sure Hare could too. Hare still looked confused, so Tortoise suggested Hare spend the day with him so he could show Hare how it worked. Hare agreed to spend some time with Tortoise, but not too much time, Hare said. I still have a lot of running about to do today. They set off down the road. Hare jumped, hopped and skipped as fast as he could and was soon far ahead of Tortoise. Tortoise took his time and slowly strolled along. He gazed around him in appreciation of the beautiful day and marvelled at how soothing the sun felt on his shell and head. He stopped to smell some wild roses at the side of the road. Ah, delightful. A butterfly fluttered through the air and landed on the velvety petals of a pink rose. The butterfly opened and closed her wings, displaying beautiful shades of blue and yellow. A slow smile spread across Tortoise's face as he absorbed the wondrous sight of the exquisite butterfly. Hare bounded back to Tortoise and asked if he could speed up, please, because he was going far too slow. 
Too slow for what? Tortoise asked. The question confused Hare, and he wasn't sure how to answer it. His whiskers twitched in confusion. Tortoise gently suggested that instead of him speeding up, perhaps Hare could slow down. Hare's eyes widened in surprise. He said, Slow down? I never slow down. I'm not even sure I know how to slow down. Tortoise smiled kindly and asked if he could try it, at least once. Hare looked at Tortoise's kind face and began to smile. He said he would try his best to slow down. And Hare did try. He tried very hard. He walked slowly at the side of Tortoise and swung his arms in a relaxed manner. When Tortoise stopped to smell the flowers, Hare stopped too and inhaled the lovely floral perfume coming from the plants. He agreed with Tortoise that it was a wonderful smell. But no matter how hard he tried, Hare just couldn't get his bouncy feet to keep going at a slow pace. Before he could stop them, his feet broke into a run and he raced along the road at high speed. He went so fast that he ended up five fields away from Tortoise. Realising what he'd done, Hare came to an abrupt stop, turned around and headed back to Tortoise. He told Tortoise it was impossible for him to move so slowly and there was nothing he could do about it. Why don't you follow my lead, Tortoise suggested. He slowly moved forward, counting his steps as he went. One, two... One, two, one, two. Hare thought it was a peculiar thing to do, but he didn't say anything. Instead, he began to count his steps, just as Tortoise was doing. It took him a while to match his fast pace with the Tortoise's more leisurely one, but it did happen eventually. It wasn't long before Hare found himself thinking only about his steps and nothing else. Counting his steps was a calming thing to do, and Hare felt himself becoming more relaxed with every step he took. One, two, one, two, one, two. However, a little while later, a few busy thoughts drifted into Hare's mind, and he started to think about all the things he needed to do that day. He began to walk faster and faster. Soon, he broke into a run, and he bounded along the road. Hare felt like he had to keep moving quickly in order to keep pace with the many, many thoughts that were whirling through his mind. Hare stopped at a tree and looked over his shoulder to see where Tortoise was. Tortoise was far away down the road. Hare noticed that Tortoise wasn't alone anymore. He was talking to someone. Hare couldn't make out who it was, but he heard laughter coming from their direction. Feeling curious, Hare headed back to the tortoise to see who he was chatting to. As he got nearer, tortoise smiled his way and introduced Hare to Jimmy, the field mouse. Tortoise said, I was talking to Jimmy about his family and asking how his children were getting on. They're growing so fast. But you must know that, Hare. You must have seen them running through the same fields that you run through. Hare shook his head. He barely noticed the fields as he rushed through them every day, let alone anyone else who might be running through them too. 
with a proud smile on his little face, Jimmy told Hare that his children loved seeing Hare run past them every day. They would wave and try to keep up with his long strides. Hare said, I'm very sorry, but I've never noticed your children before. I've been going too fast to notice anything at all. But, with help from tortoise, I'm trying my best to slow down. The next time that I'm running through the fields, I will look out for your children and say hello to them. Perhaps they could join me in a jog. I promise not to run too fast. He smiled at Jimmy. Jimmy said his children would love that and thanked the hare. He bade them farewell and disappeared into the tall grass. Tortoise and hare continued on their way, hare doing his best to walk at a steady pace. They strolled into a sun-dappled orchard that was full of apple and pear trees. As they walked under an apple tree, Tortoise stopped and looked at the canopy of leaves above them. Ripe, sun-kissed apples hung heavy from the branches of the tree. Hare, have you ever noticed how many different shades of green there are? Even on this tree there's a wide variety. Look, the underneath of the leaves is much lighter than the top of them and some of the leaves on the ends of the branches are already starting to turn a pale yellow, a sure sign that autumn is on the way. Can you see the fruit up there? Have you noticed how there's a faint pink blush on the side of the apples that face the sun? It's fascinating, don't you think? Hair glanced at the tree. He thought it looked like all the other trees around them. But as he looked closer, he could see Tortoise was right about the different shades of green. He took his time and counted at least seven varying tones of the colour, and he realised that each apple differed ever so slightly from its neighbour. He'd never noticed that before about apples. He smiled down at Tortoise and said the apple tree was quite beautiful. Tortoise agreed. They ambled through the orchard, taking their time to inspect each apple and pear tree they came upon. They pointed out interesting things to each other. As Hare stood beneath the pear tree, a small leaf came free from a branch and floated towards him. Hare became transfixed as he watched the leaf sedately dance from side to side on its downward journey. He held his paw out and the leaf landed right in the middle of it. It was such a simple thing to see, but for some reason it filled Hare's heart with joy. He gave the leaf to Tortoise as a gift. Tortoise thanked him warmly and tucked it inside his shell. Hare had a niggling thought that he should be doing something other than standing in an orchard gazing at trees but he couldn't work out what that something was. He pushed the niggling thought far from his mind and continued on his walk with Tortoise. Tortoise led him to Primrose Pond and told Hare about the large family of frogs who had made it their home. In the spring, there were hundreds of tadpoles Tortoise said. Hundreds and hundreds of them. They were fascinating to watch, and they grew into frogs so very quickly. Did you get the chance to see them? 
hair shook his head. He'd run past Primrose Pond many times, but had never given the animals who lived there a passing glance. Now that he was learning how to slow down, Hare promised himself he would look out for the tadpoles the following spring, and he'd return every day to see them growing into frogs. The lovely thought made him smile. Tortoise said there were many frogs in the pond, and if they were lucky, some of them might appear and have a chat with them. Are you happy to stay here a while and wait? Tortoise asked. It's a lovely day. I love this time of year, where there's just a hint of autumn in the air. Can you smell it? Hare wasn't sure what autumn smelt like, but he took a deep breath anyway. Even though he couldn't put a name to the scent, he caught a hint of something wonderful in the air. Was it the aroma of autumn? It was another lovely thought, and the smile on Hare's face grew bigger. He told Tortoise he would be more than happy to sit with him and wait for the frogs. Tortoise began to take some deep, slow breaths. Hare instinctively copied him. He felt more and more tranquil with each relaxing breath he took. They sat at the side of Primrose Pond, with the sun softly warming them. Birds sang a cheery tune from the trees. Bees hummed lazily as they flitted from flower to flower. A gentle breeze caused the lily pads on the pond to drift across the surface a little. Hare's whiskers twitched. He became aware of relaxing smells all around them. He could identify some of the aromas, such as the late summer roses and lilies, but some fragrances were unfamiliar to him. He asked Tortoise if he knew what they were. Lavender and jasmine, Tortoise began, his voice soft and unhurried. Marjoram and mint, tarragon and thyme, sage and sorrel, caraway, chervil and chives. The sound of Tortoise's quietly spoken voice caused a pleasant drowsiness to fall over hair. He lay down on the soft grass and put his paws under his head. His eyes felt heavy, so he decided to close them, just for a little while. Before he knew it, he was drifting off to sleep. A peaceful, relaxing sleep. He was woken up a little later by the sound of water gently splashing. He sat up straight, blinked in surprise, and wondered where he was. Then he remembered. He asked Tortoise how long he'd been asleep. Tortoise smiled at him. Not long. You've woken up just in time. The frogs have appeared. Did you enjoy your nap? Hare wasn't used to having naps in the middle of the day, but admitted he felt much better for having had one. It crossed his mind that he should be getting back to his day soon. He was certain he had things to do, lots of things. But at that moment... He couldn't recall what any of them were. Whatever distant thoughts were on his mind soon vanished 
when he saw the playful frogs leaping happily from lily pad to lily pad. The frogs smoothly dived into the water, leaving behind an ever-increasing ripple. Some of the frogs swam closer and chatted to tortoise and hare. Hare was surprised to hear how much time the little frogs spent playing in the water. He wondered if he too should spend more time playing and less time rushing about. As they talked about the fun they had every day, the frogs began to chuckle and chortle. Hearing their cheerful laughter made tortoise and hare laugh too. Bubbles of happiness popped delightfully in Hare's tummy, and his smile grew even bigger than he ever thought possible. He knew he would include much more laughter in his day. As Hare softly considered what he normally did every day, the busy thoughts in his head swiftly returned all at once, as if they'd been waiting to get his attention. Hare suddenly realised he had things to do and places to go. He stood up and brushed some grass off his legs. He told Tortoise he really should be getting back to his day. Okay, Tortoise said with a slow nod. If you don't mind, I will come with you. I'd love to see what you do and where you go. Hare said, I'm heading towards the bridge by Ruby River. You're welcome to join me, but you might not keep up. Then, without another word, Hare hastened away. Tortoise wished the frogs a pleasant day before saying goodbye and ambling after Hare. Hare headed in the direction of the bridge, but instead of walking at his usual pace, his steps became slower and slower, and instead of keeping his eyes on the distant horizon and willing it to get closer as soon as possible, his attention went to either side of him, and he looked more closely at the vibrant flowers and wild herbs. He slowed down even more and inhaled the soothing scents drifting from the plants. Taking deep, slow breaths made his pace slow again and soon he was walking instead of running. Hare reached the bridge that crossed Ruby River and stepped onto it. He was tempted to rush straight over it and on to his next destination. But there was something about the slow-flowing river below the bridge that made him linger. He sat down in the middle of the bridge and swung his legs over the side of it. He gazed into the water and became lost in the swirling motion of the river as it flowed over and around the ruby-red rocks which had given the river its name. Time slowed down. Hare sighed happily. Before he knew it, Tortoise had appeared at his side. He sat next to Hare and gazed at the river. Hare pointed out the different shaped rocks below them and how the water bubbled and trickled in various directions as it went on its journey downstream. Tortoise nodded and pointed out some tiny fish who were half hidden behind some of the larger rocks. An occasional twig or leaf would appear on the surface of the water and would float unhurriedly along it. As they sat there, 
hare asked tortoise about his life and the things he did every day. Tortoise told him how he wandered the forest and fields, taking in the sights and sounds of nature. He noticed the changing seasons and how the days would grow longer in the spring and then shorten as autumn approached. Tortoise loved watching the sun peep through the trees in the morning and then watching it on an evening as it dipped below the horizon and made the sky turn from blue to soft shades of pink and purple. Hare sighed happily again and said he would take the time to look at nature more. In his soft, slow voice, Tortoise continued talking and described how he'd seen a tiny ladybird landing on a delicate daisy in the meadow. The first lambs of the season leaping joyfully through the fields. The changing display of flowers throughout the forest from the first snowdrops in spring to the purple heathers of winter. The bright sunshine of a summer's morning and the enchanting sight of the first snowfall of the year. The two friends stayed on the bridge gently talking for hours, appreciating the delights around them and enjoying each other's company. They discovered that although they had a lot of differences, they had a lot of things in common too. Soon, the afternoon gave way to evening and the sky began to grow a little darker. The tranquil song of a nightingale filled the air. It was joined by the low hoot of an owl. Hare became aware of the lateness of the day and told Tortoise he should be returning home to his burrow. Have you ever slept beneath the stars? Tortoise asked him. Hare shook his head. He'd never even considered such a thing. Tortoise told him there was a lovely tree very close by which offered a cosy nook within its exposed roots. They could settle down there for the night and look through the branches to the stars above. He said a beautiful tawny owl often chose that tree for her evening rest, and she sometimes told Tortoise a bedtime story. Maybe that would happen tonight. Hare couldn't think of a more wonderful way to spend his evening and thanked Tortoise for his offer. They left the bridge and walked towards the tree. It did indeed look very cosy and welcoming. Hare found himself yawning and his legs became more tired with every step he took. When they reached the tree, Tortoise settled down under it and made himself comfortable. Hare collected some soft moss and tucked it around Tortoise to make sure he was as comfy as he could be. Then Hare settled down next to him. They gazed at the night sky through the wide branches above them. Tortoise pointed out each star as it appeared. Hare had never noticed how bright the stars shone and how twinkly their starlight was. A deep hoot sounded out 
and a tawny owl appeared on the branch above. She said hello to the two friends and asked about their day. Hare told her about the wonderful things he'd seen and done. As he talked, feelings of peace and contentment settled on him like a soft blanket. His limbs grew tired and he let out a long yawn. He looked over at Tortoise and thanked him for such a marvellous day. Tortoise said it was his pleasure, and perhaps they could do the same thing tomorrow, if Hare wasn't too busy. Hare thought that was an excellent idea, and he silently wondered what other delights awaited him the following day. The owl proceeded to tell them a bedtime story. But it wasn't long before she stopped talking, because the two animals below her were fast asleep. She smiled as she looked down at them. In a soft voice, she said, Good night, tortoise. Good night, hare. We're drifting towards dreams now, the happiest, loveliest dreams you've ever dreamt. We're calm and cosy, your breathing is relaxed and you can feel that lovely weight of the blanket keeping you safe and warm. Aren't you comfy? You are so warm and cosy so sleepy. As you drift into dreams, count all the things you're grateful for. Let yourself fill up with all of the little moments that made you smile today. See the faces of the people that made you laugh. Think of the things that challenged you. Think of the things you learned and the practice that meant you'll be a little bit better tomorrow than you were today. Think about how warm and cosy and sleepy you are here in your bed. What a day you had. Wonderful things lie ahead for you too. You will have wonderful adventures tomorrow, and the next day, and the one after that. The whole world is waiting for you. But there's no rush. There's nothing more to do today. All that's left for today is rest. Deep, cosy sleep. The most beautiful of dreams are waiting for you now. That's why you're drifting off, gently, into dreamland. So keep breathing slowly. Let yourself get toasty warm. Let your eyelids stay heavy. And know that you are safe. Remember that you are smart. You are brave. You are kind, and you are loved. Think it to yourself. I am smart. I am brave. I am kind. I am loved. You are a dream. When tomorrow comes, you'll face it with a smile. Because you are smart, brave kind and loved, because you are you, uniquely, wonderfully you. What kind of dream are you drifting towards tonight? You can dream however you want, because your imagination is as wide as the universe. 
What will you find in tonight's dream? Maybe you'll see your favourite characters. Is that Hector and Sunny over there? Maybe you'll visit the moon where there's mice eating cheese in the craters. Maybe you'll walk through Sleepy Forest where Coco the koala is strumming his pink ukulele on the banks of Sleepy River. Let your imagination take you away. Your dreams are all yours and you deserve the sweetest dreams of all. Because you are brave, you are kind, and you are loved. You are brave, you are kind, and you are loved. And you are wonderfully, uniquely you. You are a dream, and it's time to sleep tucked up in your bed. Breathe slowly and melt into your bed. Isn't it warm and soft and cosy? It's time to rest. Take deep breaths in and out and let yourself relax as you say goodbye to the day. Let your body get even heavier. Let your whole body go floppy. Drift deeper into sleep with every breath. And say goodnight. Remember, tomorrow will be a good day. Because you have a big heart. You are a good friend. You believe in yourself. You know there's nothing better to be than yourself. It's okay to get things wrong. It's okay to ask for help. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Be proud to be different. Be proud of your achievements. Be proud of yourself. You are a good learner. You are a good listener. You are a good example to others. You are valued. You are loved. You are sleepy. So drift off now, little one. Let the dreams take over. As you sleep, let your dreams take you to magical lands and faraway places. Remember, there's no room for worries in your dream. Just magic. It's a magic place where anything can happen. Anything you want. It's a place of positivity and light. Let positivity soak into you and fill you up. Imagine it as a golden light traveling from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. Imagine that wherever the light touches you fills with happiness. Imagine that the light makes you feel calm. You're wrapped in a warm, cozy glow within your soft, toasty blanket. Isn't that nice? You are safe, tucked up tight. So sleep soundly all through the night. Sweet dreams.